Okay, welcome everybody. We're going to talk about how you should write your lab report for the decomposition of sodium chlorate lab. Um, you guys should have two papers for this lab. This one here has most of the information on it. And then the second page you are given is your data table, okay? Um, so let's talk about what's necessary in your lab report. You guys need to have a title. So there it is. Um, you guys should also include in your lab report a purpose. Now in the experiment overview, a purpose was provided to you. You guys need to paraphrase this, which means rewrite it in your own words um, and include it as part of your lab report. You guys also need to include the answers to pre-lab questions one through five. This was a homework assignment you were given one day. This should already be complete. You just need to write it as part of your lab report. So make sure that you still have those. <clears throat> you need to include the materials as part of your lab report. And you also need to include the procedure that you wrote. So you guys had to write a procedure for this lab. I gave you a procedure so that you could compare it to yours and add things that you are missing. You should not copy the procedure that I gave you. Instead, you guys should just make improvements on your procedure and just write a procedure that fully explains what it is you did in the lab. So big points on the procedure, remember, there should not be any pronouns. So no I, me, you, we, none of that. And it also needs to be numbered with clear steps that can be easily followed, okay? All right, <clears throat> beyond that, you guys collected data in the lab. So this is kind of what you guys should have. Um, if you were not here for the lab, feel free to use this data. So just pause it real quick and copy this data onto your own paper. Uh, for those of you that have your own data, go ahead and use it, okay? The post-lab questions also need to be included in your lab report, okay? So there are several post-lab questions that are here. Um, for the first one, for each trial, find the initial mass of sodium chlorate and calculate the number of moles of sodium chlorate. So if I look at trial one, I can go ahead and do this for trial one. Um, the empty test tube was 7.98 grams. With the sodium chlorate, it was 8.26 grams. So this is a pretty easy calculation. Um, all I'm going to do is take 8.26 grams and subtract the mass of the test tube. And that should leave me with the mass of sodium chlorate. Um, and I believe it is 0 0.28 grams. Okay. So that's the mass of reactant that I'm starting with, okay? The second part of this was to calculate the number of moles of sodium chlorate. So all you're doing is a simple dimensional analysis calculation. If I'm starting with 0.28 grams of NaClO3 and I want to convert that to moles, then I'll simply put the molar mass of sodium chlorate here, which you should have calculated in your pre-lab question, and use dimensional analysis to calculate my number of moles of sodium chlorate. Okay, so that should answer uh, question number one, post-lab question number one. It's easy subtraction and then dimensional analysis. Pretty simple, okay? Um, for question number two, based on the molar masses of the three possible solid products, in equations one through three, and the number of moles of reactant in each case, calculate the expected masses of the three possible products for trial one and trial two. <clears throat> so again, I'm only gonna use trial one. Um, you guys will have to repeat everything a second time for trial two. But for question number two, um, what you guys need to do is use the equations from page one. So let me show you what I mean. Um, Really quickly, let me go ahead and just calculate for a second. Give me a second. Okay.
Okay, so when I go ahead and do this calculation, um, it turns out that we had 0 0.00263 moles of sodium chlorate in test tube one or trial one, okay? Um, so how am I gonna do this uh, to answer question number two? I'm gonna start with 0 0.00263 moles of NaClO3. Now in equation one on the front, um, I believe you guys had to balance this and it should have been two, two, one. I believe that's the correct ratio. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, so if we look at this, <clears throat> For every two moles of sodium chlorate I start with, I should end up with two moles of the solid product. There's a two to two mole ratio here between sodium chlorate and the solid product in equation one. So for every two moles of NaClO3, we get two moles of NaClO2. And then it asked us to calculate the expected masses of the products, okay? So that means I need to turn moles into grams. So for every one mole of NaClO2, it has a molar mass of 90.441 grams. That should give us the expected mass uh, using equation one. I would repeat that for equation two. So if we look at equation two, the solid product was um, sodium hypochlorite, so NaClO. I would repeat the same thing, starting with the same number of moles. But for every one mole, there's a one to one mole ratio, of NaClO3 we start with, we're producing one mole of NaClO2. And then one mole, or I'm sorry, it's just NaClO for that one. One mole of NaClO has a mass of 74.442 grams. That'll give us the expected mass of product using equation two. And then I do it again using the data from equation three. <clears throat> so in equation three, I believe the um, coefficients were two, two, and then three. Yes, that's right, okay? So two, two, three. So again, starting with the same number of moles, the number of moles that was in the test tube, 0 0.00263 moles of NaClO3. I know that for every two moles of NaClO3, we get two moles of sodium chloride, according to equation three. And then one mole of sodium chloride is 58.443 grams. So that would give us an expected uh, mass of product using equation three. Then you would repeat all of these calculations with your data for test tube two. Okay, so you're doing all three of these twice. Once with the number of moles from test tube one, once with the number of moles from test tube two. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, you guys got an actual amount of product. Uh, left in your test tube. You need to compare it to these amounts to see which one it's closest to, and that gives you an idea of which equation was the right one. Did equation one happen? Did equation two happen? Or did equation three happen? Whichever one your mass is closest to, that's probably the equation that occurred in the test tube, okay? And that's exactly what you're doing in question three. So you're comparing your actual mass um, and we only really heated it. Um, you guys probably don't have data for our first heating. 
just use that last mass to calculate your final mass. Okay, so whatever the final mass was that you measured, use that to calculate um, your yield, okay? So for me, using this data, at the end of the experiment, there was 8.14 grams left in the test tube. So to calculate my yield, I would take that and subtract the test tube. So for question three, 8.14 grams minus 7.98 grams leaves me with 0 0.16 grams. I would take that and compare it to the answers that I calculated in question two to see which equation it was closest to. And that gives me an idea of whether equation one, equation two, or equation three was the true equation for this lab. Okay, and you would just explain that in question three. So calculate your actual yield by subtracting your last value and the mass of the test tube, and then compare it to your answers in question two. Okay, there's an equation here uh, in question four to calculate percent error. And then equation five is asking you to write a paragraph, a few sentences, to explain why the mass that you got in the lab is different than the actual mass that you calculated. They've given you several different scenarios. You can choose A, B, or C. Uh, whichever one sounds like it might be your source of error, go ahead and write about what happened in the lab that gave you guys some error, okay? Your percent error should not be zero. Your actual mass and your expected mass are probably gonna be different. So in question number five, you're just explaining why, okay? Um, again, this is due Friday, so I want you guys to try your best on this lab and make sure that you include all parts of the lab report. Thank you.